Hi folks, um, so just another video for uh, this week, um, looking at wargaming once again. Um, one of the elements of uh, wargaming that I think is sometimes seen as being almost impenetrable by some folks is historical wargaming. Um, I'm hopefully I'm hopefully going to show you with this video that <laughs> it's not actually that hard to get into it, uh, and it actually has a lot more freedom than sci-fi and fantasy war games in uh, a lot of senses. Um, and you also don't need to collect massive armies in order to play the games and enjoy them. Um, so we're going to start off with one that I am a big proponent of, and that is Saga by uh, Studio Tomahawk. So Saga is a war game which was initially focused around the Age of Vikings as you can see here which had you playing as the Vikings, the Anglo-Saxons, the Normans and the like in their battles against uh, each other during the Dark Ages. It then expanded to include uh, the likes of um, the sort of Age of Invasion, which is the kind of Arthurian age, uh, as well as um, sort of the Age of Hannibal, sort of looking back in time at ancient wargaming, and also the Age of the Crusades, if you wanted to move further forward and dive into some medieval battles on the tabletop. They also do a fantasy selection of games as well. Um, one of the neat things about this particular game, though, is that it is almost two games in one. Saga is one of those games where the um, there's the cut and thrust of the actual battlefield tactics, which is often very, very simple. Um, you have maybe only around 30 models per side when you're playing the game. And when you dive into it, um, you will effectively just be moving things around quite easily and killing things quite quickly. The complexity for Saga comes in the addition of what's called battle boards. Uh, so in Saga, each faction has their own battle board and their own set of custom dice. Uh, I'm actually going to bring up the uh, Gripping Beast website because you can buy it because they're a French creator, but you can actually buy all their stuff from here. So when you dive into the game, uh, you'll have a, let's just go with Age of Vikings, shall we, to begin with, and let's go with the Vikings themselves. There we go, when that loads. Um, so yeah, so you'll have your, your faction of choice, you'll have your battle board, and you'll have your set of custom dice. Those custom dice uh, are then used to roll on the battle board. Here you go, you can see some of them there. Uh, and you use the runes or the symbols in order to enact special abilities. Now you can just use the runes and all the things on your board in order to just move your troops around and do actions with them. But you can then do things that add uh, additional flavour to the models. So for example if you are playing as Vikings you might have one that uh, allows you to harness the power of Thor uh, and imbues your warriors with the might of Thor and can smash your enemies for more damage. If you're playing as the Anglo-Saxons it may enable you to move into shield wall formations to make you more defensive. Um, uh, the, the thing that really sells the game for a lot of people is that it's historically adjacent rather than being specifically historically accurate in many ways. The game is one where you can get away with a lot more stuff when it comes to modelling and that kind of stuff because, as the name would suggest, it's based on the idea of a saga. So it's about the heroics of the individuals involved, the warlord at the front leading the way, your Sigurds and stuff, uh, uh, you know, your Ragnar Lothbrooks charging into battle and hacking apart enemies uh, in great swathes of blood and bone uh, and that kind of thing, um, whilst also allowing you to paint up and model historical miniatures. Um, one of the nice things about it as well is that you can get started for like this price effectively. Um, uh, you don't have to just go this way. Uh, the the Griffin Beast stuff is pretty nice. I quite like their plastics. I've created a warband of Saxons and a warband of Vikings based on these uh, these miniatures. They're really good and easy to put together. But there are a lot of other um, creators out there that are doing ad additional models. So for example, if you're looking at uh, Victrix, they do some really high detailed um, and 
fairly expansive plastic kits that will allow you to make some really cool warbands. The other thing that's really good about this is that you get, I mean, look, 60 figures in one set, right? 60 figures and you get to make models like this. <laughs> These are a little bit harder to put together than your uh, Gripping Beast ones because the, the instructions are a little bit worse for wear, but <laughs> um, these are amazing and effectively you buy all these for £38 and you can make an entire warband. Um, you start off with maybe around four points as it's called in Saga, where you have um, a Warlord, maybe a couple of units of Hearthguard, and some, which are like your special elite units, and then a couple of additional units of... Um, Warriors, maybe even some levies if you want to, uh, and they're split down into sections of 4, 8 and 12, so you just build 4 Hearthguard, 8 Warriors, 12 levy, that kind of thing. Uh, this was at least how it was when I was playing in 1st edition, it may have slightly tweaked in 2nd, uh, but uh, it's a really good, quick, easy game to dive into and play that allows you to be really inventive with the models that you pick up and model but then also means that you can be historically accurate if you want to and the games play really quickly and interestingly at the same time as well so if you're interested in uh diving into a little bit of um dark age warfare on the tabletop i would recommend saga uh, i will say that the um the rules when they, when you first get them may seem expensive uh you will need to have the saga main rule book um, which is that one there, which is actually quite cheap. But then each of the supplements then comes in a little bit of an extra cost. So £30, but that's because you get the battle boards within those uh, sets as well, which is quite nice. So you get all the extra things you need to play. So it's a game within a game, which is always nice. Um, it's not dice heavy. Uh, it's all about sort of strategic movement and use of the battle boards, which I think is quite good. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. Uh, so if you're interested in playing something... It's a, a bit, uh, a bit, a, a bit of a, an interesting sort of historically adjacent entry point to uh, wargaming. Then I would recommend that. Sticking with the idea of Vikings, uh, there is also a set of rules um, called Raven Feast, which is really good uh, from the folks at Little Wars. Now they designed this to be effectively your first war game. Now this is a little bit um, smaller in scale, I'd say, than uh, Saga in that you play as a small warband of warriors rather than creating larger uh, sort of skirmishing uh, raiding parties that you would in Saga and obviously Saga can get bigger as well depending on the number of points you play um, but this is a really fun and quick and easy game to dive into played on a small table space uses exactly the same metal and plastic miniatures and that's something we'll come back to as well the rules are very easy to read the book itself, as you can see, is only 44 pages. Uh, the rules actually only fit into about eight of those, which is really good. <laughs> uh, and there's a really nice way to make, make your warbands uh, basically just by picking cool characters and then giving them abilities as you see fit, which I think is really nice. Like, that's the list of different unit types that you can draw from. This is very much more focused on Vikings. Um, but there are other factions in there, so they've got Saxons, for example, and they've also talked about uh, doing some quirky additional bits and pieces too. Really nice, quick and easy um, scenarios to dive into, which is good. The other nice thing about Raven Feast is that it is um, free, <laughs> which is always good. Uh, so you can just download the rulebook for free. Great, fantastic. Uh, and then you just have some paper models to get you started if you really want to, if you don't want to buy the plastic models and get going there, which is really good. Um, and they do the rules in Chinese and French, which is always nice to see. Uh, but yeah, so you've even got some paper crafting terrain as well for you to go raiding with. But yeah, some really cool stuff there from the folks at Little Wars, uh, doing some really nice uh, bits and pieces for those people that want to keep with that sort of Viking feel of war games on the tabletop. Now, one of the other um, uh, sort of entry points to war gaming on the tabletop it's probably World War II, and it would be hard not to recommend uh, Bolt Action. Uh, so Bolt Action is a game where you take control of uh, armies from the World War II, um, from the beginning, in the early war period, all the way through to Normandy in the late war, uh, and you can play as pretty much anybody nowadays. Um, you can play as the, the Brits, the Americans, the Germans, the Italians, the Russians, or Soviets, sorry. 
uh, and everybody in between, more or less, which is really cool. Um, the actual uh, starter armies are fairly good for what you get. There's a good mix of both plastic and metal within these sets, um, and the uh, the general focus uh, is on quick and easy, sort of, again, historically adjacent in many regards, uh, war games. It's not possibly seen as the most accurate of historical war games for the period, but I think it's probably one of the most fun uh, in that regard. Um, one of the cool things about this game, uh, obviously, you get the various armies. Uh, so you've got some American paratroopers there going against some Germans uh, with their uh, half track, which is kind of cool. Um, again, there's a vast array of different options for you to choose from when it comes to making armies for this game. <laughs> uh, I think there's uh, pretty much, well, every. <laughs> A lot of people create 28mm miniatures for uh, World War II, so you're not going to be stuck for choice. Um, the actual game, again, run by D6, which is cool. Uh, one of the neat, neat things about this is that it's a dice-in-the-bag mechanic. Um, so you see these dice here. These dice are put into the bag. You get one per unit in your army. Uh, and then at the beginning of a, of a round, you draw a dice out the bag, and that act, the, the colour of dice then decides which side fights. So if it was grey, a German unit would be activated. If it was sort of khaki, green, it would be an American or an allied unit that would get activated. Uh, and you could choose to advance, shoot, run, rally, all that kind of thing. One of the nice things about the game as well is that it really kind of focuses in on the effect of firepower. Um, so you have uh, what are called pinning markers, which are these red markers that you see here. Uh, when a unit gets shot at, even if nobody dies, they get pinning markers and that kind of thing, which will allow you to uh, sort of... Uh, which lower the results of dice rolls uh, and also show the fact that you know people don't want to get killed which is quite nice uh, the game also plays from a really nice um, level I think you can play it with maybe one squad per side if you really wanted to and that would be fine maybe two would probably be better <laughs> and a commander uh, and you can play it up to large scale as well as long as you've got enough dice for all the different units and that kind of thing so it plays really nicely plays very quickly as well um, it's got a sort of sense of brutality to it <laughs> which might be up people's streets uh, so it's definitely one to dive into and have a look at if you are interested in world war ii uh, and again there are lots of people that create miniatures for uh for World War II for you to choose from. Uh, Victrix, for example, that we were just looking at, they do World War II stuff. Um, they they have got a whole bunch of uh, great sets in here for you to choose. I mean, these obviously are showing the 12 mil versions, but uh, there's other bits and pieces out there too. Uh, this is one of the creators that I think is well worth having a look at, actually, uh, which is uh, War Games Atlantic. Um, so War Games Atlantic have been working on uh, World War II kits for the last while. They've got sort of French Resistance, uh, your German Panzerleer, the Italian infantry, so they kind of fill in the gap for a lot of people as well. But as you can see, lots of people make World War II miniatures on the tabletop. Um, there's also another game that I think is really worth giving a look at. Uh, a lot of people will probably look at World War II miniatures and think aircraft, uh, sort of airfix kits. Um, one of the cool games that came out recently, well, not recently, relatively recently from uh, Warlord, was actually Blood Red Skies. Uh, Blood Red Skies is a uh, aerial game, so it's smaller in scale, as you can see, one two hundred, uh, and it's a fun game of dogfighting and stuff on the tabletop, which is really good. Um, one of the nice things about it, uh, you see these stands; they kind of click, and you can click the planes to be sort of facing upwards or facing downwards, showing the way that they're ascending or descending in the air. And it's a, again a really quick and fun, easy dogfighting game uh, that puts me in mind of old sort of video games like Atung, Spitfire, and that kind of thing, which is really nice. Uh, their focus at the moment has been on uh, the Pacific Theatre and the Battle of Midway, um, but they have done stuff in the past looking at the Battle of Britain and that kind of thing as well. So you're not just limited to the Pacific Theatre and the fight between the Allied Americans and the Japanese. You can also go back in time. Uh, and play out the likes of the Battle of Britain and that kind of thing with all your uh, British forces. So if you like the Hawk Hawker Hurricane, like me, the plane that saved the war, uh, I won't hear anything against it. <laughs> I mean, for example, there, look, there's the Battle of Britain start set, looking pretty cool, uh, very nice, uh, with the two sides there. Um, then, yeah, you can dive in and play that if you are looking for something a little bit different. Uh, as I say, the, the planes are a lot of fun to paint. They're plastic, which is always a big big bonus as well. 
uh, and the range is fairly extensive now. Uh, sticking with the theme of uh, World War II, but going in a little bit of a different direction, uh, we also have this game, which is 0200 Hours, which is Night Raids in World War II from Grey for Now Games. Now, this goes in a slightly different direction to Bolt Action. Bolt Action is focused on the larger military engagements between the Allies and the Axis uh, during World War II, whereas O200 Hours focuses in on the small engagements between uh, sort of elite fighting forces like the SAS uh, going up against uh, German sentries and prison guards and all that kind of cool stuff. So if you're looking to play out cinematic engagements between the SAS and the like, then this is the way to go. Um, it's just come out from, uh, well it's on pre-order actually, from Grey for Now Games, maybe out by the time you're seeing this, uh, and it's got some really cool plastic kits that were actually designed by War Games Atlantic, which we looked at a second ago. Um, but yeah, some really cool models in this one, and a really fun system. Again, if you actually sign up to the newsletter, I believe, you can actually get the rules for free, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, so you can see the PDF rulebook there. It's only £8, but you can subscribe to the newsletter and get the rulebook for free and have a look at it, diving in to see what you think of it. A really new game, but much more skirmishy focused, which I think is really good. Uh, not a lot of people want to make massive army straight out of the gate, and that's why I'm trying to kind of confine a lot of this stuff to sort of smaller style games. Um, if you're interested in something a little bit more narrative, then this might be for you. Um, moving on from that, we've got more World War II, because you can't not. Uh, we have uh, Flames of War, which is uh, another great big World War II war game for you to dive into. Um, this one changes things up in that the scale drops from 28mm. So 28mm is the scale that you're seeing um, here. Sorry, So uh, a 28mm figure about sort of that big kind of thing on the screen you know you can see it uh, sort of uh, allows you to be more focused on the individual whereas with flames of war you start to look at larger scale troops and tanks and engagements and stuff on the tabletop uh, so flames of war is basically one of the best games out there if not the best world war ii war game for those who want to play at a grander scale the focus moves towards tanks uh, and sort of armoured engagements uh, but you can also find a whole bunch of um, infantry figures for you to play around with in the game as well uh, some of the more recent stuff that's come out uh, focuses in on the bulge German campaign so that's the German push uh, on the eastern front but as you can see lots of tanks for you to choose on, lots of mechanised infantry you, there is still infantry, again 15 mil so it's a little bit tinier than you might be used to painting uh, in 28 mil, but it's well worth having a look at and playing around with. The new edition has made things a lot quicker and easier to play as well. They took a lot of um, sort of signatures from Team Yankee, which is their kind of Cold War era war game, and use those in the game now. So you've got little cards for each of the different um, uh, units in the game, which is really good. Uh, and they've really broken things down to enable it to be quick and easy to dive into without, without a lot of pain, which is really good. If you're interested in tanks, this is probably the one that I think you should go for, um, especially if you like World War II, obviously. <laughs> uh, not a lot of tanks in the Ancient War, uh, but yeah, some really cool stuff there from Flames of War to dive into and have a look at. Uh, moving on to some slightly more, I guess you'd say, esoteric style games that you wouldn't really necessarily think of. Uh, you've got the Barons War, which was created by Warhost, uh, and also uh, miniatures were provided by... Um, uh, footsaw miniatures. Uh, you also notice the artwork and, and some of the really awesome miniature photography here that was done by HVM uh, Workshop, who I actually used on the cover image for this video. Uh, so make, I'll have a link down below so you can go and check out more of their work because they're amazing painters and set up amazing dioramas and scenes as well. Uh, the Baron's War is focused on the um, sort of period uh, of warring barons in the uh, uh, in the Middle Ages, uh, sort of looking towards um, the kind of Magna Carta sort of era and um, kind of Robin Hood and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and in this game, it's a little bit more of a skirmishy affair. You play as a, a particular named character if you want to, like William Marshall, or you could play as an unnamed baron if you prefer. And then you make a little warband and you kick ass and take names on the battlefield fighting for control of little tiny pieces of England. 
um, because that's what everybody wanted, Civil War. Um, so yeah, you can even play as bandits, like Robin Hood and that kind of stuff, which I think is really cool. There you go, there's Robin Hood and Friar Tuck kicking ass and taking names on the battlefield. Uh, but you've also got Little John and Will Scarlet and Maid Marian. Uh, they've recently sort of bra- uh, branched out into doing Crusade stuff as well. So they've done Outremer, which is the uh, Crusade rules. They've also done... Uh, the conquest supplement as well if you want to go dark ages uh, but one of the cool things for me actually was some of their smaller um, sort of uh, scenario packs which are designed for new characters so they designed these mini campaigns uh, which the way that they're designed is that they're designed for newcomers so you buy this particular PDF and then you build up little for, uh, forces for either side, and then you play out three games that go up in points, allowing you to get more familiar with the rules and build up your stuff as you go. So, for example, in this one, you play three scenarios. You've got the ambush, burying the hatchet, and bad neighbor. the bad neighbor. Start off at 500 points, move to 750, and then all the way to 1,000 points. So it's all about sort of slowly building up your army. Again, designed for newcomers who are probably again new to the idea of playing historical war games and want to try something a little bit different and new um, there's also the warhost website for you to go and check out again i'll have the links down below for this as well so you can come and have a look at it some really good blogs talking about the de- development of the game and how it came together there's a retinue builder as well which is always nice to see and uh, yeah it's definitely one to go and check out if you're interested in playing out medieval combat on the tabletop between warring knight factions Going back to um, Grey For Now games, we also have another one of their games, which I think is really fun, which is called Test of Honor. If you like Samurai, then this is probably the game to play. Uh, I know there are other Samurai games out there. There's Ronin from Osprey and all that kind of stuff. But I think Test of Honor is probably the one to shoot for. Uh, it's been really, really fleshed out in the new edition of the game since it kind of blossomed into the into the game that you see here, moving away from Warlord's uh, uh, sort of iteration of it uh, where you take on uh, the role of mighty samurai heroes uh, and their war bands of troops and you fight out little tiny skirmishes for again a test of honor fighting on the tabletop they've done some really good stuff in here uh, when it comes to um, kind of building up interesting and different uh, war band styles so you've got the Soki monks the samurai the ashigaru uh, you can then play through different periods so you've got the sengoku period as well which is quite nice which introduced a lot more firearms and that kind of stuff there too. The Iku Rebels, if you want to play as them. Oh, it's such a fun little game that sort of allows you to dive in and play out those kind of samurai movie um, moments on the tabletop. Um, again, this is one of those ranges that I think uh, often gets overlooked, a little bit like kind of medieval England. I think a lot of people focus on either the ancient, which tends to be very big, <laughs> Uh, but then you've also got um, uh, World War Two as well, which um, you know a lot of people play in, uh, and the Dark Ages too, because everyone likes the feel of Vikings on the tabletop. Uh, but I think sort of medieval stuff and samurai are, are sort of periods of history and areas of the world that we need to dive into and have a little bit more of a look at. I think, and uh, they've definitely done that with this game. I think it's well worth going to have a look at and, and checking out. Uh, but yeah. Test of Honor is definitely one to give it a go. I've not played it myself, but I've seen, I've read a couple, read a bit of the rules, and uh, I really like the kind of the art style and the way that they've designed the game. Um, again, very sort of narrative and scenario driven, which is always fun to see. Uh, moving on from that, uh, we've got another sort of outlier, which is Dead Man's Hand. So, if you're interested in the idea of playing um, uh, sort of World War Two, uh, World War Two. Wild West conflicts on the tabletop, then I would definitely recommend uh, Dead Man's Hand. It's a quick and easy game that's been designed um, for sort of creating little uh, groups of gunfighters and bandits and all that kind of thing. Uh, they designed plastic range quite recently. You can see the ladies one there, and there's also a men's one, which will open up as well. Uh, so the ladies one comes with a bunch of lady fighters, and then you also have the male one, which comes with a bunch of male fighters as you might have imagined. Uh, you get a whole bunch of minutes in the box uh, for making your little kind of gang that to use on the tabletop. Uh, and it's a really fun system. Uh, I know a lot of folks at uh, work have been playing this one and, and really enjoying the, the, the feel of the game. Uh, and they tend to do um, 
sort of starter sets every so often. They kind of reiterate them based on the uh, releases that they've had uh, and allow you to dive into the game a little bit easier with the rulebook uh, and all the tokens and all those bits and pieces as well alongside the miniatures. Um, so if you're interested in Wild West stuff, then I would highly recommend Dead Man's Hand. Uh, it comes well recommended by a lot of folks out there. Now, I just wanted to go back to um, Victrix and a couple of other creators. So Victrix have been doing some really nice stuff for Vikings and things like that. Uh, they also have a really good range of 12 mil um, World War II stuff, so you could probably use these in uh, Flames of War if you really wanted to. Uh, it wouldn't be overly different, but they've done a really nice job of all of their World War II stuff. They've even done some really nice infantry packs as well for all the core forces, which is nice. But you can find um, a whole range of different creators out there doing historical miniatures. And this brings me to one of my points about uh, historical miniatures as a whole. Is that, and historical wargaming, is that with sci fi and fantasy, you're very much focused in on buying into a particular range. So if you're playing Warhammer, you can't really get away with buying other models, although obviously you could, because you want to try and match the aesthetic of Warhammer, I guess, for a lot of people, right? Uh, same with sci fi, that kind of thing. With historical, you could buy from any historical miniature creator, and it would all work as long as you've got the right scale. You want to build an English army and use it in one of your games? Cool, sure, fine. Boom, here's all the models you need to do it. You could use them across five or six hundred games, probably, that exist at the moment. Um, you have a lot more freedom in where you buy stuff from when it comes to historicals, I think. Uh, and that obviously then means that you get very interesting and dynamic and diverse armies. Uh, because two people who make an, a, a Viking army can pick from... A vast array of different creators out there. Obviously, we were looking at um, Futsal Miniatures, who did stuff for the Barons War there, but they have a massive amount of Saga Miniatures. So, if you didn't want to buy from Victrix and you didn't want to buy from Gripping Beast, cool, well, come and buy one of the Saga armies from the folks at Futsal in Metal, and it's just as legal as playing any of those other games, which I think is really nice. Um, you also got uh, the likes of uh, War Games Atlantic that I talked about. So they've done, uh, obviously, your sets of World War II. They also do World War One and that kind of thing as well, which is always nice to see. They also tend to look into creating miniatures for um, sort of elements of history that not a lot of people do. So you've got Goth Warriors and late, late Roman legionaries. If you're playing one of the ancient versions of Saga, for example, they might be good for you to dive in time and look out for those. But there's lots of different creators out there. I've put a couple of here. So you've got um, the Perrys, the Perry Twins, who used to sculpt for Games Workshop. They have really nice sets. You've got Victrix. Uh, you've got War Games Atlantic, uh, just to name a few. Now, to cap things off, we have something a little bit different. <laughs> so maybe you want to play games, but you don't want to spend pretty much any money at all. You have a good printer, and you just want to enjoy some more games on the tabletop. Well, how about Peter's Paper Boys? So Peter's Paper Boys is different in that they make paper soldiers, right? So their focus is you download the sheets and then you can just print them off and use them as many times as you like. Just think of an army that you want to build and dive in and have some fun, which I think is really good. You also get the added bonus of creating miniatures that are designed by Peter Dennis, so the artwork is beautiful. Um, when you look at these, they come in at a pound for, you know, loads of miniatures. Like, you can get all of the Dacian infantry that you'd ever need for a quid. You do then have to sit there and cut them out <laughs> with a knife, but that could be quite therapeutic, which I think is quite nice. Um, but it's a, just a way for you to dive in and play war games without the need to specifically um, I feel like you have to do a lot of painting and all that kind of thing which is quite nice um, there's also uh, a set of rules out there that have always been designed for you to play games with so you've got some ancient rules there which is quite nice uh, and other things by Andy Callan uh, I also want to point out that Amazon actually sell a bunch of the Peter Dennis books um, where everything is effectively uh, in there for you <laughs> You basically just get the book and then you just start going. You get the book, you've got all the models, you snip them out, you sit them down, 
and inside each of these books you'll find a set of rules for playing those games. So this, for example, the War of the Roses, gives you two armies for that period and the rules to play the game. 1066, exactly the same. The Peninsula War, exactly the same. American Civil War, exactly the same. Blah, 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 blah. As you see, there's even one for boats with the Spanish Armada. So if you're looking to play games at... If you're looking to play out the entire of 1066 with Saxons, Vikings and Normans for practically nothing compared to the price of buying miniatures and spending the time painting them, these are pretty fun. You could also use the classic miniatures and then the rules from these books in order to play those games, which I think is really nice. Uh, there's also another creator that I think is really good for this as well. Um, so Wofun Games uh, actually worked with Peter Dennis um, to create a selection of plastic versions of their models. Um, so if we go to, yeah, let's go to Antiquity, uh, although this probably isn't going to show them here. Uh, products, go back, here we go. So say you wanted to dive in and play out some Viking invasions, as we were talking about before. Well, why not buy the Peter Dance collection in plastic? So these cost obviously a little bit more than you would have thought uh, previously. Um, uh, so, I mean, this set cost you 120 euros compared to it being 15 quid or something like that. But you get everything for playing those games but in plastic standees with plastic backing or with the artwork of Peter Dennis on the front of them. So it's a little bit more expensive, obviously, but look at the massive armies you can play for a relatively low outlay in the grand scheme of things because obviously you don't have to buy paint and all that kind of stuff. You just to buy some terrain and play the game, really. Uh, but yeah, some uh, some fun stuff there that I think will be, uh, will be interesting for a lot of people to play around with and obviously a quirky addition at the end as well. Uh, there will be bookmarks for you to go and click through all these and choose which ones you want and this is by no means an extensive collection of the different offerings that are out there at the moment um, if I was going to suggest of all of these one to have a go at I would suggest diving into the Dark Ages to play around with that it's very popular there are lots of people creating miniatures for the Dark Ages it'd be really fun to see some links down below to stores and all that kind of thing that you think would be really good or names at least of, of creators that you think would be really good for show, showing uh, Viking miniatures in the, in the comments but um, Saga is really good for this it's got it's it's a game within a game in many respects but then you also have the ability to go and play all sorts of different games as well so you could go and play Raven Feast or you could play Saga or you could play the um, the uh, the Warhost version Conquest and you could go and play out your Dark Age games there as well and it's just very evocative and allows you to be history adjacent without feeling like you have to be so stringently tied into the idea of painting every single rivet or piece of armor in exactly the right way and all that kind of thing uh, but yeah hopefully this has given you some ideas for diving into historical war games and showing that it's not as uh as as foreboding as you might think it is uh, i know a lot of people who are like oh my god but i have to paint hundreds and thousands of miniatures to play napoleonics and ancients well if you want to play some of the bigger games that's true, but there are also lots of really fun games out there for the historical period that I think you should definitely go and check out. So yeah, hopefully this has been helpful for you, uh, and you know I've I've used some of my my wargaming wisdom to bestow upon the what kind of games I think you should go and out and have a look at. Um, yeah, uh, comment down below, share, subscribe, all those good things. Uh, there's a Kofi link down there as well if you want to give me a cup of tea. But ding, uh, but yeah. Uh, some fun stuff that I think you can dive into and have fun with. Make sure to comment down below with all the different historical war games that you think would be good for newcomers. And uh, yeah, we'll be back in another video very soon. Uh, my signature awkward look off to the side of camera to stop the recording. And I'll see people very, very soon with another video. Bye for now.